Support for this podcast comes from Human Amplified's VIP community on Patreon. Becoming a VIP by purchasing one of our foundational Patreon tiers is all about you choosing how you interact with and grow from our storytelling to more fully embrace your own humanity and, by extension, the humanity of others. Join today at patreon.com front slash human amplified. I'm your host, Brandi Fleck, and this is Human Amplified. We're on a mission to revamp society by amplifying your humanity. This week on the show... Hey there, I'm Taylor Rochester. I think one of the biggest holes that people kind of get in is feeling like somebody else put them there. But at the end of the day, it is your choice. You can choose a moment to redirect, to pivot, to move on to something else. People that are experiencing happiness, their mind is just focused on that moment. My last win or my last loss might help me in the future become better. Fear is in the looking, not the leaping. Happy April, listeners. This month on the podcast, we're shifting from a theme of self-care and body to the power of choice. And we have several guests lined up on this topic all month. First of which, I'm incredibly excited to introduce you to Taylor Richesti. He's a professional basketball player, husband, dad, world traveler, best-selling author of the book, A New 2020 Vision. And today he's talking to us all about choosing happiness and trusting the process of your life. He appeared on our blog this past summer with some other amazing insight. So if you're interested in hearing more about authenticity, embracing being the underdog, and gratitude, read his blog article titled Reprogramming Adversity. But in this episode, Taylor really dives deep into how happiness is a choice, what he personally does to choose happiness, and how you can incorporate some of those same practices into your own life, from noticing the little details and finding the good to placing bets with your friends and family to add some excitement to a personal growth goal you may have. We begin the conversation by following up with what Taylor's been up to since we last spoke. We move into a bit about Taylor's book after that, and then he really gives you some actionable takeaways with tips around gratitude and creating habits to build confidence. We finish up by talking about celebrating wins, the importance of accountability, and the roles of trust and even addiction when choosing a positive life path. You'll come away from this episode empowered, inspired, and will have next steps you can take to start choosing happiness more in your own life, even when bad things are happening in the world around you. And quick note, we recorded this episode before the Winter Olympics took place and before Taylor started his latest basketball season in China. So this will make total sense after you listen, but just know Taylor did make it to China. For the links mentioned throughout this episode, visit the show notes at humanamplified.com front slash episodes front slash 094. Welcome back. I'm so glad that you are back. And just what have you been up to since the last time we talked? I was scared that you're going to ask that because I don't think there's enough time on the podcast. Okay. <laughs> well, I've been uh, I'm a professional basketball player. I'm about to play my uh, 13th season. Um, I have a contract to go play in China. And these last couple months has been have been absolutely crazy. Okay. Trying to get a visa to go out to China. Um, they're, they're hosting the Olympics, the Winter Olympics in February. So it kind of threw a wrench in everything. There's uh-huh. COVID, uh, you know, still happening. And so they shut down most visas. It's taken me months to finally, as of two days ago, get my special talent visa to get over to China. And what would you know? I got my visa here in France. And now there's no flights from France to China. Oh, And so you have to fly direct, but nobody's flying. So I've been hustling the last day and a half trying to figure out if I can even go play with my contract, with my visa in China, um, because um, I got to fly to a different country. But will they let me go from that country to China? So it's been a world away. At the same time, I brought my my amazing wife uh, that's supporting me through this craziness and my two kids. Uh, out to France where they're going to live um, for the year. And my kids are going to school and getting everybody settled here. It's where my wife is from. And so um, there's just so much going on. So um, part of being human is experiencing this, uh, this kind of craziness. And this is a life that I chose yeah. uh, many years ago. And I'm still happy that I'm here. Well, I'm glad you're still happy that you're here 
because I know it's come up with some other people I've talked to lately about how it's good to reevaluate. So have you thought about that? Have you like reevaluated and said, yeah, this is still intentionally what I want to do? Yeah, I think, I think one of the biggest holes that people kind of get in is feeling like somebody else put them there Mm -hmm. or um, they're in a position that they can't get out of. And that's a big, um, big block towards optimism, towards excitement, towards realizing uh, the power of choices and the power that we have every day and the opportunities that we have every day. And so um, I'm definitely aware of who got myself into the situation. Um, I learned from my parents that whenever uh, things are going on, I'm the common denominator that's in the room. Um, and so I take full responsibility for everything and this craziness is, is part of my job. And I'm definitely thankful for it every day because I'm thankful that I have this as an opportunity. And, um, I joke around with a lot of my teams and the coaches or the teams will break down after practice or break down after a game. They say, okay, practice is tomorrow at 4 PM. And I'll always kind of say something like optional or, you know, up to you, because at the end of the day, you got to be there. But at the end of the day, it is your choice. You can choose at any moment to redirect, to pivot, to move on to something else. And uh, I have a passion for basketball, so I'm still letting it roll. Yeah. Okay, great. So what happens if you can't get over to China, like with the contract, how does that work? Yeah. So, um, it's kind of on them to try to figure out how to get me over there. I'm, I'm doing as much as I can on my end. I'm talking to some specialists that hopefully will give me some great answers tomorrow. I might have to fly from France to Los Angeles and then in Los Angeles, try to get, um, a couple tests done so I can get back on a plane and then I can fly to China. So I'm trying to figure out how that works. If it doesn't work, I just told my wife today that I'm flying up to Norway. There's a place called preacher's pulpit. It's on my bucket list. And I said, if I have to wait a couple more days, I'm flying to Norway. I'm going to go stand on this giant rock and just look out at the world and meditate or pray or do whatever I need to do to get myself right. Because this process has been crazy. And I'm like, hey, instead of waiting, I'm going to take action. Yeah. And I'm just going to go check somebody off my bucket list and live an exciting life because life is short. Yeah. Okay. There's not a chance it'll be canceled, will it? Or like that you would have to sign another contract to go somewhere else? Or is it just delays? <laughs> without without getting too much into my history with contracts or China or whatever it might be, anything is possible. Okay. And uh, I woke up a little over a year ago, ready to go to China. And I got news that foreign players aren't coming to China. And then I got news that this is happening or that's happening. So I can wake up tomorrow and the whole world might shift and uh, I'm prepared for that. So anything's possible. Okay. Well, that is a lot. Well, I hope, I really hope it all works out. And like, if you end up going to Norway and checking that off your bucket list, like I'm there for the pictures. I totally want to see what you get into. So I'll be looking. So I have been reading your book, A New 2020 Vision. And we scratched the surface of it when you first came on the blog to talk about the underdog mentality. So I won't give it all away, of course, but your book covers everything from authenticity, communication, mindset, inspiration. But the main topic that comes up the most, I think, and the theme throughout is happiness. I think, do you agree with that? Is that what you were trying to do there? Happiness is definitely something that's rooted in all of it. I think a lot that's rooted in it is um, authenticity. I think a lot that's rooted in it is uh, choices. A lot that's rooted in it is uh, having a positive filter and realizing the power of your mind. Mm -hmm. And so I think when it all kind of loops together and you realize that you can positively filter the world, then that can be a roadmap to your happiness. And then at the same time, my happiness is not the same happiness as somebody else's. Right. So um, I'm given a word, I'm given a sentence, I'm given a paragraph that might reach one person and something else might reach something else. So it covers a lot of ground, but ultimately my goal is for the person reading it to get something out of it that helps them individually on their journey, on their path. And um, I originally wrote this for my daughter. And so now I have a daughter and a son. So Um, for them to be able to read it and to gain more happiness and more understanding of the world through, through my eyes and help them in their life. Yeah, that's great. Like it it sort of gives me chills to think about it. Like, I love how it came together, but 
I think another thing that ties everything together in the book is sort of the theme of enjoying and trusting the process of our lives, sort of something you were just talking about. So, and, and that's part of embracing being human. Is that, did you mean to communicate that or did that just sort of come out and you realized it after the fact? I definitely meant to communicate it because, um, as you know, in the book that I talk about, um, trying to live for 95% of your life and not trying to live for the 5%. And that's the process. And a lot of people are looking at the, the outcomes. They're looking at something down the road. They're looking at a graduation or they're looking at something that's uh, really exciting in their future. And that's great to have that optimism and to have that excitement about what's going on. But then we can't forget about what gets us there. Um, because that's the, that's the meat and potatoes. That's the, that's the journey. That's everything that's happening. And it becomes so right in your face when you have kids, because you start thinking of, man, I'm excited for this. I'm excited for that. And, you know, and some of the day to day is tough, but then all of a sudden I'm looking at pictures. I'm like, oh, my kids are getting older. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I don't want, I don't want them to grow up so fast. I don't want to miss out on anything. I want to appreciate every single moment as a basketball player. I have game days and I have travel days and I have days that I have practice days. And, and I need to realize that a a practice day might end up being one of the best days of my life. Um, and better than a game day, instead of just looking forward to the game days, Mm -hmm. I might have to travel to go to China. And if I go to China, I have to quarantine for two weeks in a government facility. And for a lot of people, they're going to be like, Hey, you know, you, you, you're going to be in a room and you can't do this or can't do that. And I'm just like, okay, what can I get out of those two weeks? It could be two of the best weeks of my life. I could have self-actualization while I'm there. I'm going to try to take a guitar and learn how to play guitar. And I can end up teaching my kids how to play music. And so I think uh, that process is realizing that each day has potential and that um, we can't just kind of skip past some days because we have things we're looking forward to in the future. Gotcha. Okay. That really brings us to that saying that's sort of cliche, I guess. I don't know if it's cliche, but life's a journey, not a destination. I mean, so does that resonate with you? I'm assuming it does. And do you think it's cliche to say that? I think it can be cliche. I think, like I said, everybody, uh, everybody has their own, has their own journey and has their own way of looking at life. And, um, in, in a, another way I look at it, it depends on if you're looking at it spiritually, it depends on if you're looking at it in a whole bunch of different ways. If you're looking at it spiritually, some people might think, Hey, the destination is incredible. So I'm going to enjoy this journey. And that helps them enjoy the journey. That's a good point. You might, you might look at it and say like, Hey, um, I have this great job and so I'm going to enjoy the journey. And so your big thing happened in the past and then you're going to appreciate it moving forward. So everybody kind of can, create that journey for themselves and create that inspiration for themselves. But it is important to realize um, your authentic path and realize what makes you happy. Because a lot of times we're looking external and we're looking outward, especially with social media and things like that. And we're saying, Hey, that works for this person. Even in the book, this guy is taught writing this book and he's talking about this and that, and that works for him. Well, you need to be able to incorporate that into your life and figure out how that works for you for sure. Okay. So I love this story that you tell about your wife in chapter five, finding daily happiness. And it's my favorite chapter of the whole book. And like I said, I promise I won't give it all away, but the story is about her making crepes and what the process entails. And so similarly, I would love to hear what's a specific process in your life where you work to enjoy and notice the details. And what are some of those details? I think it's, it's everything. I, I think the, the details are in every moment. I try to look for moments. Um, I try to, I, I, I talk to some people that are dealing with hard times and I say, Hey, even in your hard times, uh, there are moments of good that you can uh, hold on to, uh, that you can find inspiration from in the good times. You can hold on to those moments. There's a, I give a, a lot of times I talk about that if you're in a dark room with no windows, no doors, and somebody, you know, turns on a light, it's going to make a big impact. And if you're in a a room that, you know, already has some light that uh, it's not going to make as much of an impact. So I always look for, for moments, little, little things that even in my darkest times, I can still find something I can try to find some type of light. And then that affects the way I attack my day. So during my day, I'm thankful. First thing I do, I wake up, I say, thank you. And then I have to go around and attack the day and look for reasons to be thankful. And those are those daily applications. Those are those daily things you can find. 
And I'm happy that you like the chapter because in a lot of books, a lot of people read some inspiring stuff and they say, okay, well then what, what can I do? Like, how do I start? How do I get going? And I wanted to make that a big part of the book that says, Hey, try this, try this, try this. Mm -hmm. These are, these are actually some applications that you can use moving on in your day and you figure out how that works for you. So for me, it's saying, thank you. Yes. And then going out in my day and trying to find all the reasons that I'm thankful. Okay. If we're having trouble enjoying the process, like say we are going through some hardship and we're having trouble being grateful or finding the light in that, what are some tips for how to go about enjoying it more? Absolutely. I think one thing that's interesting is um, people that are experiencing happiness they're not experiencing happiness because there's nothing bad going on in the world or nothing bad going on in their life. Their mind is just focused on that moment in that happier, in that happier time, in that happier situation, uh, focused on something that they're smiling about or that they're feeling uh, courageous about or whatever it might be. And when things are going bad, it's not because nothing good is happening in the world. And so it's not without the other one. And so I think that once we realize that it can be part of our daily mantras in the morning, it can be part of our daily understanding of life where you can wake up and realize like, Hey, bad is not just all bad. Good is not just all good. And you know, there's also things happening. And so once we realize that it's more of a choice that it, it is in our mindset and we have these daily applications, we surround ourselves with happiness. I call it highlight happiness. So highlight happiness all around your life where you can make it almost impossible, where you can go through a day and not find inspiration on something that you write on the wall or something that you, some music that you play in your car or whatever it might be. And so um, realizing that, hey, even in my darkest time, it doesn't mean that good is not around me. I just need a way to shift my mind and refocus on that, on that good that's happening. Okay. So some tangible like action steps I'm hearing you say is realizing that you have a choice, look for and focus on the good, like surround yourself. The highlight happiness is looking for and focusing on the good or surrounding yourself with things that inspire you. And then you mentioned daily mantras in the morning and sort of starting your day right. So does that sum it up? Yeah, I think that's pretty good. I mean, the big thing for me, that's my, my biggest uh, motivator, which I already mentioned is that uh, I wake up and the first two words are thank you. Mm. If you're going out and attacking your day and going into your day and you're finding reasons to be thankful, um, then you're finding less reasons to be frustrated. You're finding less um, reasons to be um, stressed or whatever it might be, because there are so many reasons to be thankful. We're on this Zoom call right now. And I'm thankful that I own a computer. I'm thankful that I had a chance to write a book. I'm thankful for this relationship that we have. I'm thankful that you're wanting to have this conversation. I'm thankful that you have listeners that are open-minded to um, listening to positive messages, to great energy, to creating something for their life. Yeah. I'm thankful that I can speak internationally because soon I'll be flying somewhere else and I can still talk to my family. I mean, I could go off for an hour just talking about how thankful I am right now sitting here in this chair while nothing good is necessarily happening to me. And I might've had a really bad day, Yeah. but there's so many things going on around me that I'm just excited about and thankful for. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I think that's really helpful to demonstrate how someone can do that. I also want to ask you about incremental steps and small changes. And this is something that I often teach my mentees and talk to my readers about is incremental progress is the key to big changes. So mm -hmm. I know you have a similar stance. Why do you think starting small is important? I'm a big believer in building the right habits. Uh, I'm a big believer in building confidence in yourself um, as a basketball player. Uh, some games, the basketball, the, the hoop feels like it's enormous. And some games, the hoop feels really small and you just can't make a shot. Um, and that's straight confidence. That's straight. Uh, you know, I made two, my last two or three shots. So the next one's for sure going in and everything looks good, feels good. Body feels great. And so confidence is key. So when you start small, you can, you can check things off your list. You can accomplish small goals, accomplish a lot of little things that you're going after which is a great way to feel uh, resilient, to feel courageous as a person. Um, I believe in definitely building the right habits. So the big thing with these small incremental stages is 
it becomes who you are instead of just becoming like a, a byproduct of, of who you are. It becomes who you are. And so I'm not a hard worker because in this specific situation, I'm going to work hard. I'm a hard worker because I'm a hard worker. That's who I am. Mm -hmm. And so no matter what comes my way, I'm going to work hard because I've built those habits. I do it day in and day out. And the best part about that is if I succeed or if I fail, which I should be the one defining anyway, either way, I'm waking up the next day and I'm working just as hard because that's who I am. Mm. So I don't feel stress about needing to be perfect or else I'm going to work less hard because I'm kind because I'm a kind person. I'm not kind because someone's kind to me. Yeah. I'm thankful because I'm a thankful person, not because there's things to be thankful for. And so it just, it just translates and you build that each day with your habits. Okay. Awesome. Listeners, we're talking to Taylor Richesti, pro athlete and best-selling author of his latest book, A New 2020 Vision. It's time for a quick break. I'm your host, Brandi Fleck, and this is Human Amplified. You might be a Human Amplified VIP if you're full of insatiable curiosity and love being in the know, you value or want to work on vulnerability and forward motion in your life, you want to take our relationship to the next level. You've been listening to this podcast for a while, you read the blog, and maybe you subscribe to our newsletter, but you want more quality time together. And most importantly, you want to be a good human. You're probably already a good human. The fact that you're thinking about it says a lot, but motivation and inspiration always help. If this resonates with you, go to patreon.com front slash human amplified to join our foundational VIP community where you get a live chat with other VIPs and me, early access to premium unedited videos, some sweet deals, monthly live Q&A, and exclusive access to commission artwork from me. You choose your level of involvement, and no matter what level you choose, I can't wait to hang out with you more. Sign up today at patreon.com front slash human amplified. Now, back to the show. We're talking with pro basketball player and author of A New 2020 Vision, Taylor Richesti. So once you build those habits and you're taking these steps, eventually time passes and you look back and you're like, wow, all these steps really led to some huge changes or some huge wins or maybe losses. But like you said, you should be defining what that is. So how do you take stock of your wins and celebrate? I keep looking forward. I think, I think it's everything relates to sports if you're an athlete. So excuse me for keep, keep going back, but my last win or my last loss might help me in the future become better, might help me today work harder, might help me. Why did I win? Let me keep doing uh, stuff that puts me at my best. Why did I lose? How can I learn from that and move forward? So my past games won't help me win my future games in basketball. So as far as how do I equate it, I don't even necessarily have the time to look back and feel um, proud of myself or happy for myself because I'm just thankful regardless. And I'm just moving forward and looking for the next wins. And I'm looking forward to the next things I can be optimistic about or look forward to or be uh, thankful for. Or if things are not going my way, I look around me and try to figure out people that I can inspire and, and hope things are going their way. Okay. So a lot of forward motion there. <laughs> and <laughs> I want to shift gears a little bit I want to talk about trust because when you're enjoying a process as opposed to the destination or the outcome, I feel like there's a lot of trust that has to be involved in that. What does trusting a process mean to you? First, I like to think about the cliches. I'm, I'm just trying to I'm trying not to sound too cliche. I just try to think about the beauty of life. I just try to think about what, what are the chances that I'm here alive right now uh, even having this conversation, yeah, trying to trying to make sense of everything, um, just makes me feel uh, in awe, in, in gratitude of just being present. And so, as far as trusting the process, if if you don't trust the process, it's like, how are we even here right now? You know what I mean? <laughs> and so, um, it just it makes me happy just to just to think about it. It makes me happy to just you know breathe and realize uh, that that truth. 
I trust the process because I choose to trust the process. I choose to angle my mind um, towards a path of opportunity, towards a path of optimism. I, I believe there's only so much room in your mind for uh, certain thoughts. And the more positive thoughts that I fill my mind with, uh, the less room I have for negative thoughts or doubt or insecurity. Mm-hmm. So again, with those daily applications, with those daily habits, everything, I'm building that confidence. I'm building that trust in myself, in the process, in my life. And, and then just growing older, realizing that life goes fast and I want to be experiencing all that I can and realizing that I've dealt with a bunch of highs and a bunch of lows, and I'm still sitting right here talking. So uh, I trust that things won't be perfect. I trust that things um, might be great, might not, but at the end of the day, I can still be sitting here and still be positive and choose to uh, look at my outlook the way I want to. Yeah. So it sounds like trust comes pretty easily for you. What would you say to someone who might have a hard time stepping out in trust or another word could be faith or, you know, to just to know that it's going to be okay. The first thing is uh, fear is in the looking, not the leaping. I'm a big believer in this where a lot of trust and a lot of confidence comes in um, trial and error. Mm. Uh, it doesn't come in uh, to thinking about it. And there's a lot of fear and there's a lot of uh, anxiety that can come into thinking about things. Um, I Every year I'm trying to figure out which country I'm going to live in and all this kind of stuff. But once I get there, once I make a decision, it's just like, hey, this is different than I thought or better than I thought or worse than I thought. It's just um, I talk to a lot of people about, um, a ropes course that a lot of kids go to when they're younger and they're climbing through the trees and they're doing their things and they're connected to a rope, but some of them are scared and some of them are not. And either way, scared or not, you're not going to fall because you're harnessed in. And at the end, you have to do a leap, uh, trust jump and jump and try to grab the bar and people stand up on there. It doesn't matter what age and they're shaking and I'm very scared. And once they realize when they're in the air is it doesn't matter if you catch the bar or not. You know, you rappel down nice and easy and and you're brought down by somebody else. And all the fear was just in the thinking about it, in the looking and not the leaping. Mm. So people that don't trust the process um, need to just actually go out there and do more. um, Because with the more, even failures, uh, with the more failures, you'll realize how resilient you are and realize that it doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down, you're still right there. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I haven't quite heard it put exactly like that before, but I like that. Yeah. <laughs> and then I have to ask in your book, specifically chapter five, which we had been talking about earlier, you use words like addiction and gambler. Mm. And I'm a word person. So I sort of latched on to those. And you say there are healthy versions of addiction and gambling. And then you describe healthy things you're addicted to and ways to take risks that motivate rather than consume. So I have a couple of questions around these words. First off, why those word choices, addiction and gambler? I'm a big fan of stand-up comedians. I'm a big fan of stand-up comedy. And what I've realized um, is that they're extremely controversial because they, they talk about a lot of subjects that uh, make some people feel uneasy, uh, make some people laugh. Yeah. A lot of them might even be truths, but truths that people aren't ready to hear or truths they might hit home different to some people than other people. Um, and then what I've realized kind of through going to a lot of stand-up comedy shows and listening to a lot of stand-up comics and reading uh, comments about them and figuring out they got kicked off a show or something like that because of something they said, um, I just realized that I love being open-minded. I love the idea of um, looking at something that's stereotyped as negative or stereotyped as something that um, people don't want to be associated with Mm -hmm. and realizing there's more than one way to look at it. There's more than one way to look at failure. There's more than one way to look at a word like addiction. There's more than one way to look at a lot of different things. And so although there are hot hot topics and hot button words, Um, Those words specifically kind of hit home because um, I like to gamble, but I'm a very healthy gambler. Um, I have addictions as far as um, wanting to um, make people happy. Um, But Mm. as long as it's rooted uh, in the right things, 
um, as long as it's rooted in positivity, both internal and external, as long as it's rooted in kindness, as long as it's bringing positive things to me instead of negative things, um, I think that that can be great. And again, the biggest thing about addictions or saying words like that or trying to say anything like that is I never want to give a blanket statement towards anybody. This isn't, I'm not talking about the word addiction because I'm talking to all addicts. I'm not talking something like this because I'm speaking to everybody. I think everybody's different and I can't use a blanket statement for anybody. And so this is another one of those moments where um, some people might get something from this um, and another person might not want to use it because they might realize that it might be more dangerous for them. Mm, okay. Something that was really interesting in what you were just saying is, and you didn't put it exactly this way, but I, the self-awareness that you have to say, well, I am addicted to some things and this is how I'm going to harness that in a healthy way. Whereas if, um, you know, some people who aren't self-aware of certain things might go down a completely different path. That's just a little side thought there, but I, I do want to say too, say if someone was an addict or a gambler or, you know, had some unhealthy issues in these realms and they were reading your book, would you give them the same advice or how would they know, oh, well, you know, this part's true for me, but maybe this part doesn't resonate so much. So I'm going to leave that. How would they know to do that? I think normally when I give advice, um, I have to get to know the person. Um, so to just give, like I said, a blanket statement advice is, is definitely difficult for me because uh, to get to know the person and their, uh, and their specific needs uh, is a little bit different than just saying, hey, you know, you're struggling, this works. You know, what are you struggling with and why and how can we harness that into something good? Because something that comes with addiction specifically is people say, I have an addictive personality. Mm -hmm. So if it's not this, it's that. And so that's an interesting thing to play on because like, okay, so let's use that for the good. How can we use that for the good? Yeah. It could be just, um, you know, uh, uh, counting uh, numbers all day in your mind because you have to do that instead of doing something that's, that's negative. Um, and that's something simple. And that's something I never thought about before, but it's just, it's just there. Let's try to do something neutral instead of something negative. And after neutral, let's try to push it and make it positive. Let's be addicted to uh, self-improvement, but with an underline of that self-awareness that says, okay, I do have this situation or I do have this uh, problem going on in my life and how can I make things better? Um, but like I said, it all comes with uh, a little give and a little take and it all comes with knowing the person that you're talking to. Yeah. Okay. And then this is sort of related. It's like when you do sort of funnel that into, you know, healthier choices and you're like, how, how do I make this healthy for me? How do you personally find the balance between choosing a healthy lifestyle and becoming addicted to these healthy things, but not becoming obsessed in a way that hinders relationships and connection? Because I think the healthy part is where you still get to have balance and connection and relationships and the unhealthy part comes with disconnection. Absolutely. I think a lot of it deals with humility. Self-awareness is a huge thing. Being able to have surround yourself with uh, incredible people, incredible people that will talk to you and, and keep it real with you. Um, tell you how you're doing, um, having a partner, two people, three people that you can count on to, um, help you through different processes, especially if you're dealing with something that is tough in your life or dealing with some adversity, um, having people hold you accountable. One of the biggest things <clears throat> I've learned when it comes to love, happiness from other people's studies is you have to be held accountable from other people and you got to hold people accountable. You have to have people around you that are, are looking for you to do the right thing, to act a certain way, and you have to um, be there for other people in that way. Um, and so that's a huge thing. Um, I think there are so many uh, different things I can touch on with that, but I think that that's definitely a good start. Yeah. I think it boils down to how, you know, important it is to have a good support system. If I could add that, what are some ways that you hold people accountable who you care about and how do they hold you accountable? 
I think I'm lucky because I have friends that will just call me out. (laughs) I have a wife that will uh, call me out. Uh, I have um, a brother that will call me out, um, which is absolutely great. You know, I like to be able uh, to think that if I said something that's out of character and keep in mind, I think every day you should be able to change. That's another thing from the last question that you asked is you have to be able to evolve. If you have an, uh, even if an addictive personality, you have to be addicted to evolution and realize that every day you have a opportunity to grow and get new information and new knowledge. And uh, if things aren't working, be able to have people around you that say, Hey, let's pivot to this other way. And so that's that support system that can say, okay, here's where we're going. Doesn't need to always be like that. Let's continue. Let's evolve. Let's change because this is what's working for you. So I have people that will definitely call me out. I like to be a, um, what's the right quote? Um, a great quote is be the light that helps others see. And so I like to try to be that with other people, especially the people that are close to me. So if people say uh, a comment that might be really rude towards somebody else, um, they'll be able to see in my face. I won't necessarily even need to call them out or make anything of it, but they'll see in my face that like, Hey, probably could have used a, a different way to go about that. Or someone said to me, Hey, you know, this guy's this, what do you think about that? And I'm like, I don't really have a comment about that because first of all, I don't really like talking negative about somebody else and just being able to be real. Yeah. Because if that's who you are, if you're a kind person, you can look somebody in the eyes and in a very polite and kind way, be able to explain to them, Hey, there's more than one way to do it. And let's choose the positive way. Yeah. All right. Well, now I just have to ask you, because curious minds, I'm sure want to know, you said you, you like to gamble in a healthy way. What's your favorite game or way to gamble or, or anything like that? Oh, the, the biggest thing, I mean, it's, it's, it's with my wife. So we'll say like, uh, uh, it could be anything, one favor, you know? So like, it could be, uh, if you're with a friend or a best friend or somebody at work or whatever, I talk about a little bit in the book where it's like, you have to gamble and, uh, you know, who sings a karaoke. Um, and then, so you put yourself out there and then learn to do stuff like that. So if uh, I think I'm right about something, somebody thinks they're right about something, I'll just say, okay, let's bet on it. Let's bet a favor or a dare or a truth or whatever it might be. You can go back to a kid game and just, um, just have that excitement because gambling comes with excitement. That's why some people get addicted to it. So you can create that excitement, um, but create it in a healthy way. And I definitely like to do that with my friends and I do little guy things or not guy things, but things like play fantasy football. And, uh, yeah. I'll say like, okay, I'm playing against you this week. So we're, let's personally have a little side bet on it. And it doesn't need to be money and it doesn't need to, you know, make me sell my house. It, it can just be something fun where they have to post something that embarrasses them on social media or something. So um, you just try to get creative with it. Um, it brings out your creative um, part of your mind. It brings out some um, excitement and uh, helps you plan for the future and be optimistic about having some fun in your day and in your week. Yeah. Awesome. So bets, bets are where it's at for you then. <laughs> but you don't want to bet with me because I usually bet if I know I'm right, which I hope most people do. But a lot of people are like, hey, you know, I'm right. Let's bet on it. I'm like, Okay, here we go. <laughs> I was trying to teach my son that the other day. He's like, I'll bet you this. And I was like, no, you should not do that unless you know you're going to win. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So, well, this has been a great conversation. I just want to wrap up with let us know where we can find your book and, and any other thing you would like for our listeners to check out. Just tell us where we can go. Hopefully the link, you know, and my name will be in, in here. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah because my last name is a little difficult, but it's Taylor Rochester. So you can go to taylorrochester.com. I think I'm T. Rochester on most social media or Taylor Rochester on Twitter. And I'm trying to get more involved. I'll be going out to China hopefully soon. And so um, I'll have a lot of time in my hands um, to get more active on, uh, on social media. I love communicating with people. One of the best parts of writing this book is having a lot of people write to me and ask me questions about the book, talk to me about some adversity that they're going through and Uh, I've been able to help some people with that. So I'm very open to that. I'm very excited to do podcasts like this. I hope your listeners listen to a lot more of your podcast and get some great messages. And so, um, yeah, and I'm playing basketball. So if you Google me, you can find the videos and you can probably see where I'm playing and what's going on and how many shots I'm missing. So it's all out there. Awesome. Well, Taylor, thank you so much for your time today. And um, it's been an absolute pleasure. And I hope everything works out with your with your contract and getting over there. 
Thank you so much. Been looking forward to this for a little while, getting back and talking with you again. So I'm very appreciative to have to have me on the show. And uh, you know, like I said before, I hope your listeners are hearing this and uh, listening to a lot more of your stuff. Subscribe on your favorite podcast platform and learn more at humanamplified.com. Support for this podcast comes from Human Amplified's VIP community on Patreon. Visit patreon.com front slash humanamplified to join us for more connection and storytelling today.